Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to continue the series on cyanotic um, congenital disorders, and this one is tricuspid atresia. Before we get started, guys, please like this video so you don't forget to do so. Do it now. Like this video because you're going to love it. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already, and please help support me and support my channel so you can support it by sharing my content with a classmate, a nursing instructor on your social media platform, and engaging with me in the comments. In the comment section, let me know what you think about this video let me know if you like me to make a different video cover something else and don't forget i have audio lessons available for you on my website nexusnursinginstitute.com so with that being said let's get started again this is tricuspid atresia and this is what's going on i want you to notice look at where the circle is remember how the unoxygenated blood is supposed to be coming to the atrium from the superior inferior vein the cave on the right side of the heart right so here's the atrium right in the Unoxygenated blood is supposed to be going down through the ventricle to go to the pulmonary artery, pick up oxygen. That's what's supposed to happen. Uh, do you see a valve here? Do you see the tricuspid valve? Absolutely not. There is no entrance for that unoxygenated blood to go into the ventricle. So what's happening? Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. I, I'm going over the pathology. I didn't even cover the description. But very quickly, what you're going to see happening is that um, the oxygenated blood and the unoxygenated blood are completely mixing. And that's why this is a cyanotic disorder. One of the things you expect to see happening is that patient turning blue. So let's look at the description. So the description, look what it says. The tricuspid valve fails to develop. Remember that tricuspid valve, that is where the unoxygenated blood enters from that right atrium to go into the ventricle. It fails to develop. Consequently, there is no communication from the right atrium to the right ventricle. And I keep saying this to you guys because sometimes you forget. Remember um, in nursing, in the medical field, your right is the patient's left and vice versa. So when we say right, we're talking about this side of the heart. And when we say left, we're talking about this side of the heart, okay? Now, blood flows through an atrial, a, atrial septal defect or a patent foramen ovale to the left side of the heart and through a um, ventricular septal defect to the right ventricle and out to the lungs. So that's how it the, the blood is flowing. Now, if you don't know what the atrial septal, de septal defect is or the ventricular septal defect, I've made those videos already, go check them out. But this, this is very important for you guys to understand the blood flow of the heart and to know where these deficits are. Look at this. Because of what's happening, there is complete mixing of unoxygenated and oxygenated blood in the left side of the heart, which results in systemic desaturation and varying amounts of pulmonary obstruction, which causes decreased pulmonary blood flow. Hence why you see that patient turning blue. This is why it's a cyanotic disorder, decreased oxygen. Look at the pathophysiology, which I already explained to you earlier, but I'll go over it again. So at birth, the presence of a patent foramen or valley or, um, or you know, other septal, atrial septal opening, that's required to allow blood to flow across the septum into the left ventricle. Because remember, there is no tricuspid valve, all right? The patent ductus um, arteriosus allows blood flow to the pulmonary artery into the lungs for oxygen. And so um, I like this picture better because, let me go back here. So look at what's happening. So the blood that's supposed to be going through the tricusp cusp tricuspid valve is not. So an abnormal opening such as like that form in um, ovale, that, that's how the blood is getting from the right side of the heart to the left side of the heart. And then as you can see here, this um, blood should that should be oxygenated is going to the body, but it's mixing with the unoxygenated blood. Hence why this is a cyanotic disorder, decreased oxygen to the patient. Clinical manifestations. 
Cyanosis. Remember, this is a cyanotic disorder. Cyanosis is usually seen in the newborn period, and it makes sense. There may be tachycardia and dyspnea. Let's talk about this. Why tachycardia? Well, obviously, that patient is not getting enough oxygen. That's why they're turning blue. The heart's going to try to compensate, so the heart rate's going to go up, try to push oxygenated blood to the body. But unfortunately, that blood is mixed with what? Unoxygenated blood. So, of course, that patient's also going to have difficulty breathing. Older children have signs of chronic hypoxia. So they've been living with this with clubbing. You'll see clubbing of the fingers. Therapeutic management. For neonates whose pulmonary blood flow depends on the patency of the uh, ductus arteriosus, a continuous infusion, this is what they're going to get, of prostaglandin E. It started at 0 0.1 micrograms per kilogram per minute until surgical intervention can be arranged. So until um, that patient can get into surgery, they're going to get prostaglandin E. Surgical treatment, let's talk about the uh, modified Fontan procedure. Systemic venous return is directed to the lungs without a ventricular pump through surgical connections between the right atrium and the pulmonary artery. The modified Fontan procedure separates, this is the most important part, guys, it separates oxygenated and unoxygenated blood inside the heart and it eliminates excess volume load on the ventricles but it does not restore normal anatomy or hemodynamics so it doesn't change the anatomy of the heart but the most important part is separating that oxygen uh, um if i had the time i'd get speech therapy i promise i would the most important part of this procedure that you need to understand is that it separates the oxygenated and the deoxygenated blood. And guys, that right there is your tricuspid atresia. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let me know what you thought of this video. Let me know what you'd like to see me cover if I haven't covered it already. Don't forget, I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And don't forget, I cover lots of different nursing topics almost daily on my other social media platforms, such as TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and you'll catch me on the next video.